so a couple of days ago, my friend Mike reached out and asked if I was available this upcoming weekend to fill in for his band, The Rockets. I've played with them a couple of times before. They're a Philly-based six-piece party band, kind of like Crash the Party, but we do a lot of different music and we do things pretty differently. So I figured it would be a cool chance to kind of vlog and go through my process of doing fill-in work, which is a whole skill in itself where you have more tunes to learn in a shorter amount of time. You might not know exactly how a certain band does a certain song, especially when it comes to different transitions or different keys and stuff like that. If they loop certain sections, if they cut certain sections. So I figured today I would make a quick video just kind of going over how I prepare for these shows, what kind of gear I bring out, and we'll see what happens when you play a show with no rehearsal and only a few days notice. So let's get started. So let's talk about exactly how I prepare for a filling gig. The first thing that I do is take a look at the set list, which as we can see here, has a lot of songs that I'm already playing with both Crash the Party and the Ever After Band. So I have a couple small notes here, maybe some chord changes or some notes. Um, the trickiest thing, in my opinion, when it comes to learning a band set list is figuring out what they do differently from the recording. You know, this is coming from the cover band scene. So, for example, if we play About Damn Time, they only play until the second chorus. When they play Country Girl, after the second chorus, we go straight into the final chorus. There's no guitar solo like I usually play in my other bands. So just small stuff like that as a reminder. When you're used to playing a song a certain way, week after week, year after year, it can be difficult to remember these really small changes. So I just keep that all here in a, a Google Doc. And then there might be a song that they only call every now and then, like Forget About Dre, which again, I have this memorized from when I used to play it with Evolution X, but it's good to have that written down just in case we do end up playing it or like the bridge for Scotty doesn't know because I've never played the bridge in any other band before. So I just have that chord progression written down, but in my head, I still know how it's supposed to go. So I'll look over this a couple times and just make sure everything is good to go on that. When it comes to medleys, it's always important that you listen to the track so you can figure out these transitions. So for example, if I open up this Lady Gaga medley real quick, I know that the songs that are in it are Just Dance, Poker Face, and Bad Romance, but what are the transitions like? So I'll listen to it and I'll just kind of, you know, cycle through this. It starts off fine. So here's the chorus. It just goes straight into poker face, no stopping. And then after poker face, right, so here's the ending of the song, still playing the chord progression. It goes straight into bad romance. Everything. So since Bad Romance is usually in A minor, they kept it in A flat because that's the same key as Poker Face. So it's a straight transition, no awkward key changes or anything. So it's important to always listen to the set list, go through all these little changes, all these notes, and just have these cues in mind so that when you get on stage, you don't have to stare at your iPad the entire time, but you can perform as best you can. And you just have this as a little reminder. It's no different from having a set list with little notes on it. So when it comes to the guitar tone that I use for the Rockets, I have two main presets. I have my Rocket Ship 2.0, which is pretty much the same thing that I use already, um, with the only difference being for my mid-gain tone, I'm using a Dumble ODS 100 HRM instead of the Freeman Brown Eye. It just gives a slightly different flavor uh, for this gig, but everything else is the same. Uh, when it comes to the second preset that I use, I have the Rocket Ship Wham, where I have a Digitech Whammy emulation with my expression pedal. So when we do Killing in the Name by Rage Against the Machine, I can get that wham sound that's in the guitar solo. Other than that though, it's the same preset I use for pretty much everything. I love my preset, it's so consistent, it works for everything, and it's only really small changes here or there. Other big difference is that I use the Tone Mission Petrucci IRs nowadays, and it's the only cabinet I use. It is flawless, it's so good, it sounds perfect for everything and I don't see myself using anything else in the foreseeable future. So one thing that's really important that you always wanna keep in mind for filling gigs is usually the simpler the part, the better. 
because you don't necessarily know how each band is going to play a certain song. Asking a lot of questions is really good, especially if there's a song that has two, three, four guitar parts. Just kind of asking ahead of time, hey, what's being covered by the keyboard player? Or if there's a second guitar player, or if they use backing tracks, what's being covered and what do you need me to play? And it's always generally a good rule of thumb to learn all the parts anyway, which I do. And then when you get there, you can discuss with the rest of the band or kind of just listen, use your ear and fill in whatever is not there. So for example, the last time I filled in for the Rockets, they used a track for Sign Still Delivered by Stevie Wonder. And when we played last night, they said, oh, we don't use a track anymore. So I had to do that bam, 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 and, and, and kind of sitar part, um, which is fine because I learned it anyway, just in case. And that makes the gig go a lot smoother. Quick little rig rundown. I'm gonna be taking out the 2408 because I can get a nice coil split tone for a lot of the funk stuff that we do. And then I can just go straight to humbucker. And in the back, I have the tremolo blocked for all the drop D stuff. And then I have my tried and true Majesty Artisan while the Nebula is in the shop. I only need two guitars. I took out the Tele last night, but I wanted something a little different tonight since we're gonna kind of turn it up a little bit and play a slightly heavier set. Whereas last night we did more of a funk and R&B pop heavy set. Tonight's more rock bass. So it's all humbuckers all the way, baby. Of course, Bongo is excited to play a new venue. And then in terms of pedals and amps and stuff, it's a smaller stage and it's a six piece band tonight. So the FM9 is staying home and a lot of my spare stuff is staying as well because they provide all the in-ears and whatnot. So inside here, I have my tripod for vlogging. I have my phone stand and then I have my FM3 down there. I don't really feel like taking that out right now. And then in here, I have my Shure wireless, my microphone, because I prefer using my own microphone and my toolkit. And then we have the Line 6 power cap for stage volume. You guys have seen this before. It's small, barely takes up any space, and is super consistent. As I mentioned earlier, tonight's show is a bit heavier, so the hair has to match. Going for kind of like that late 90s, early 2000s, new metal sort of thing. Got the tank top, see all the tattoos. Super tight skinny jeans. It's time to rock and roll. And I have arrived. We are here in Washington Township, New Jersey. Never played a gig here before. I got a special uh, special guest for you guys today. Ta -da! It's Eric D from Crash the Party. What up? But this isn't a Crash the Party gig. Like I said earlier, this is a Rockets gig, or more importantly, a Crash the Rockets gig. <laughs> How's soundcheck going? Good. So it's important when you're filling in, you always want to be early because you want to fill out the room, fill out the venue, see if the rig is right, make sure you got all your stuff. And then when the rest of the band comes, you can kind of like play your set around there. So Eric and I came, we were the first people here. We checked everything out, made sure we had the right stuff. And then when the band leader Mike came in, we set everything up where he needed it to be. And now that the rest of the band is here, they're filling in, we're plugging everything in, we're gonna do a line check and then check time. <laughs>
We just wrapped up our first set, and it's probably the best set I've played in months. Like, I'm honestly feeling fantastic. There's just something about a band when you all are locking in and just vibing. You know, I made a lot of notes on my set list for tonight, just like with different cuts and cues and stuff like that. I haven't looked at my iPad at all. You're just, you feel it, you hear it, you trust your gut, you trust your ear, and everything's gonna be fantastic, so. I didn't film that first set, you know, just to get acquainted, just to make sure there are no changes that were gonna happen. You wanna stay really vigilant when you're filling in, really use your ears, really use your eyes, lock in with the drummer, see what's going on. But this next set, I mean, we're absolutely crushing it. We're getting tons of compliments. It sounds fantastic. So let's go check out the rest of the night, looks like. Thank you. 